All week long, by the way, we are taking a look back at some of Pat's favorite stories he's reported on before he retires on Friday. And here's one of them. The biggest professional sporting event ever in Maine happened on May 25th, 1965. Muhammad Ali knocked out Sonny Liston to retain the world heavyweight title at the Central Maine Youth Center in Lewiston, of all places. Now, Ali went on to become the most famous person in the world over the next decade, and he returned to Lewiston in 1995, 30 years after that infamous fight. Cindy Ali has returned to the city where he fought one of his most, one of his most famous fights 30 years ago, that quick decision over Sonny Liston to retain the world championship. He's attending a banquet here at the Ramada Inn, hosted by our own Bruce Glazier, and they'll all be ringside tonight at a heavyweight title fight at the Central Maine Civic Center, which will be seen on ESPN. But it was just as important today for Ali to keep a date at a school where he met some elementary school kids. Can you talk about a crowd pleaser. Muhammad Ali is not the man he once was, but his aura and presence are unmistakable, even for young people who never saw him fight. Ali doesn't have a lot to say. His Parkinson's syndrome brought on by years of punishment has affected his speech and his movements. But his mind is sharp and he clearly enjoyed greeting youngsters and teachers at the McMahon School. He insisted on going there rather than going for a rest after a late flight. And the kids have been studying up on him. He um, hold, held the champion for seven to eight years. Uh -huh. And um, he, he um, won it back three times. Well, he's really nice and stuff, so. What do you know about him? Um, he's a famous fighter. Yeah. What I think, think it's amazing. It's the greatest boxer ever. Now, you may not realize that uh, Muhammad Ali, here you see him signing his name on the uh, school's message board, something they'll probably never want to erase. A lot of those kids, obviously, are too young to remember that uh, Muhammad Ali beat up Ernie Terrell or played rope-a-dope with that muffler salesman, George Foreman. But if you really want to tell him what a great fighter he is, remember, he fought Superman, and he whooped him pretty good, too. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, the idea of a title fight in Lewiston, Maine, is a little bit unusual. It seemed like a strange idea. This is a long way from Vegas or Madison Square Garden. But remember, those were unusual times. Ali had won the heavyweight title from Liston in Miami. The rematch was set for the Boston Garden in November 1964. But a few days before the fight, Ali had to have an emergency hernia operation. The bout was postponed. Amid rumors of mob connections, Massachusetts boxing authorities refused to sanction the match again. An alternate site was needed. Certainly check with the Attorney General to see if he knew of any reason, illegal or otherwise, uh, why we should not uh, invite this match to come to Maine. No one could think of any reason why not, so the heavyweight title fight would be held in Lewiston, Maine. But this was a tense time. The assassination of Malcolm X stirred up animosities between different Muslim factions. And Ali's conversion to Islam and changing his name from Cassius Clay confused and angered many people. There were death threats against him. So everyone entering St. Dominic's Arena in Lewiston was searched. The fight itself was one of the most chaotic ever. To many, it looked as staged as a wrestling match. In the first round, before many people were even settled in, Ali caught Sonny Liston with what became known as the Phantom Punch, though the films show it was clearly a solid blow. Ali did not go to a neutral corner, but stood over Liston, taunting him. The referee never gave a count, but the judges said the fight was over. Spectators were not happy. What did you think of uh, the fight last night? I think it was a fake fight, very fake. Well, what did you think of it? I thought it was a phony. Let me tell you, the minute he hit the floor, I heard, they said, fix, and you could hear the race. Did you hear the people hollering, fix? Yeah, I heard it. I heard him say, fix, fix, as soon as he fell. I said, get up, come on. I mean, I mean, fix. I don't know nothing about no fix. Whatever the questions about this bout, it was clear Muhammad Ali had become the dominant fighter of his generation, perhaps the greatest of all time. And Lewiston had earned a unique spot in sports history. Okay, and uh, never, never let it be said that Muhammad Ali has lost his sense of humor. Uh, the Mayor John Jenkins presented him with a little token of uh, his appreciation for coming back to Lewiston, a, a small gold pin. And Ali stood up and said, I come all this way, and this is all I get. And the other thing he said to Mayor John Jenkins, who was Lewiston's first African-American mayor, Ali took a look at him, exclaimed, how the heck did you get here? <laughs> and it was meant really as a sign of respect to yes. say how far we've come and, and so on, but it was just giving him the needle. And, 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 and I've got to tell you, if you grew up in the 60s and 70s in particular, Muhammad Ali was just 
on a pedestal to a lot of people, not only for his boxing prowess, but for the courage of his convictions mm -hmm. in willing to stand up and be a conscientious objector and give up his career and go to prison, perhaps. Yep. And so, you know, a lot of people, it's sure, a polarizing figure, but to see him spend a few hours with him, even in his somewhat diminished capacity in, in the 90s, was a real thrill. Yeah, what an opportunity. Really cool. Yeah, amazing.